Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, the cold and flu season is just around the corner, which is usually a little more challenging uh, for parents with young kids. But bear in mind the challenges that parents of twins have during this time. You know, the reality is that there is double the chances of catching a cold, a flu, or another tummy, tummy bug with equally the same, uh, same amount of chances that as soon as one of your twins has it, or so will the other. You know, and having sick kids is, is distressing, as we all know, but um, being a parent with two sick kids would be a lot more agonizing and feel just that little bit more chaotic, no doubt. Raising twins presents its own set of challenges that only another multiple birth parent can understand. So if there is any opportunity of stopping the spread of germs between children, chances are that a parent of twins or, tri or triplets would have the know-how. So lucky for us today, we're speaking with our special guest and one of our partners here at Kittypedia, Naomi Dorland, who will share her survival strategies to help spread the, the um, Help, help stop, sorry, <laughs> spread uh, germs between uh, twins and triplets. Now, Naomi is one of the 4,560 women who gave birth to multiples in Australia in 2011. And she's passionate about all things multiple, twins, triplets, and more. And Naomi is the founder of Twinfo. And Twinfo is Australia's largest online community for multiple birth parents. Thank you so much for joining us today, Naomi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. This is our first chat and, and very, very excited to, to have you here. And thanks for your time. Um, and lots to learn um, for all of our community out there that have uh, twins or triplets. Um, and yeah, and surviving the cold and flu season, I guess, for a parent with twins or triplets is no doubt challenging. Um, but, you know, we really want to know what's the real lowdown on this and um, what was your personal experience when your twins were young? Yeah, look, um, it, it was it's tough. You know, that's one thing that I didn't even actually really think about before the babies came was them both being sick at the same time, because obviously you don't like to think about your children being sick. Uh, but when they both came down with something, it was really, really, really hard. You just, you're completely outnumbered. You know, the poor triplet parents, if all three were crying, but for me, you know, trying to um, hold them both at the same time, trying to keep them happy at the same time when they were just so miserable, it was so hard. Yeah. And I mean, back, back in the day where, where there wasn't really an online community or, or many communities, mm -hmm. I guess, to support multiple birth parents, what, what did you do for, for support at that time then? Well, I mean, you, obviously there is the um, multiple birth society, but they're all about meetings and catch ups and things. And if your babies are sick, you can't go to those. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're on your own. Um, you're stuck at home. Um, you've got no one really to talk to about it and things like that. Um, and that was one of the reasons that I started Twinfo was so that parents would always have someone to talk to, no matter, you know, if it was day or night, if their babies were sick, they had someone that would be going through the same thing or had been through the same thing for with them. Yeah, it's beautiful that you've been there for so many other families. So I love wait. it. Congratulations on that. That is absolutely brilliant. And you've just mentioned that your podcast now has just hit 10,000 people as well. Congratulations. Yay! I know. I was so excited this morning when I looked, opened up the dashboard and it said 10K. Oh, wow. <laughs> Think of all those families, all those children that you're helping out there. You're doing an incredible yeah, job. Thank yeah, congratulations. you. Congratulations. And look, I guess for any other parent with uh, like newborn twins or triplets, um, I'd mm -hmm. love to know um, from your perspective, what are the hardest things that parents with multiples experience um, about the cold and flu season? Look, for us, um, our, the hardest one that we had was um, one of them got um, RSV, a viral infection, and ended up in hospital. And then I have one in hospital, one at home. I was breastfeeding, so I was rushing back and forth between the places, expressing, trying to, you know, because I wanted them to have the breast milk, obviously, because of the immunities. And I, it was just a nightmare having them one so sick and thinking, oh, my gosh, is the other one going to get just as sick? Yeah. Um, am I going to have both of them in here? It was, yeah, it's really hard trying to juggle their needs when both of them are so, were so needy. Yes. And how about the amount 
amount of time um, they are sick during the winter months. Uh, do, do you find it's a challenge or it was a challenge at the time to keep the kids um, illness free um, throughout the winter period? There must be um, like this consistent feeling that the kids are just constantly sick through, through yeah. the winter months. So we, um, our babies were born early. So they spent, um, you know, they spent a fair while in special care and everything. And um, when we came out, it was just right, well, the 15th of June and um, is when they were born, but um, they came out just before the um, our local show it's in Brisbane is the Ecker. Yes. It's always, it, people talk about it um, being a, a germ fest and everything like that. And I remember the, uh, <laughs> the paediatrician at the hospital the day we left, he said, now do not take them to the Ecker. <laughs> And um, obviously we didn't, um, but we just stayed home for that first winter, basically. Yeah. Uh, they, their lungs weren't well enough developed if they got sick and everything like that. Um, and as, even though we tried our hardest to stay home, one of them still got sick enough to end up back in hospital. Oh, wow. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's tough. Um, and then luckily for us, the following winter, they were then 12 months old. Um, which then had its own challenges because trying to get them to stop sharing things, um, i.e. their germs, like sucking on their own, each other's toys and stuff. Of course. Um, was just as hard. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, <clears throat> as, they, as they were growing, and say, for example, in that first winter and, and in general, is it possible to contain a cold or flu to only one child or is it really just in, inevitable that they are bound to pass germs onto their other sibling? Look, you know, as a multiple birth parent, you literally dream of the day when <laughs> your children are going to share everything nicely. But this is the one thing you don't want them to share. Of course. Um, and, you know, that unfortunately is just a, one of the downsides of twins and multiples. Um, it is really common for them to share their germs. Um, you can do so much to try and avoid it. Uh, there's lots of things you can do. And look, you may be lucky. We, we've got through it several times. Sorry, that's my cat. Um, we're <laughs> sitting on the laptop. We should move it anyway. Um, um, you know, we, got, we have got lucky where only one of them got sick and things like that. Um, but on most occasions, both of them go down with it. And the downside of it is that usually it's one and then the other. It's rarely at the same time because of the incubation periods of various colds and of flus course. and things like that. Um, and it, just like anything, I mean, chicken pox, we, my twins got chicken pox. One had it for two weeks. And then basically the day we were right to go out again, the other yeah, one got it. Got it. So, oh no, it's a whole month. You know, it meant four <laughs> weeks at home instead of two weeks, you know, yeah. so. Oh, anyway, so it is, I guess, inevitable that twins are going to pass germs, I guess, back and it forth. pretty much <laughs> between you, can, you can hope and you can do lots of things like obviously increasing your hand washing and all of that kind of stuff to try and minimise it. Um, however, unfortunately, it's pretty likely that they're going to get it. They're going to get it. So, and, and this would mm -hmm. be, I guess, especially when they're really young and their immune systems are not really as strong. And I guess they are passing, as you mentioned, mentioned before, between toys and dummies and bottles. Um, and no doubt I, for any um, multiple birth parent, this is a really tough ride. Um, did you actually find the older they got, the easier it got? Uh, yes and no. So it got easier in terms of... Um, you know, you could start doing things like teaching them that the pink cup was your was belongs to this child and the red one belongs to that one or something like that. And so they had to use their own ones and things like that. A lot of multiple birth parents colour code things anyway, so they know who belongs to what and, and everything like that. Um, but so you could, I guess when they get a little bit older, you could say to them, no, no, that's so-and-so's, you know, don't touch that. Um, but you know, it's inevitable. You can try, but it's, it's fairly inevitable. Um, you know, you, there's things you can do, like if you're spoon feeding them, use their own spoon each. Don't, you know, the, um, I know the child health nurse or the GP or whatever will always say, oh, you must use a separate spoon and you must use a separate water bottle. But 
honestly, my, you just do what you need to do to get through. Yes. And if that ha- involves one bowl of food, spoon, 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 then that's what you do. But at times when they are sick, then, you know, that's one way you can minimise it is to have a separate bowl and a separate food um, yeah. spoon for them when you're feeding them. Well, there's that age old saying, you know, prevention is better than a cure. Um, you know, what yeah. items around the home would you suggest really need um, a daily wipe down and disinfectant to help spread the, um, help stop the spread of germs around the home? Is there anything in particular yeah. that you think that is, is a well, must I mean, do? There's, there's a few things, like if they've got favourite toys and things like that, um, you know, washing machines, you can put soft toys through washing machines. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, get some of that um, antibacterial canestin or whatever it is to put in the rinse. Um, you know, put some essential oils in there and everything like that and, and give those toys a bit of a wash. They could probably do with it anyway, let's be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> How these days, um, a lot of dishwashers have a sanitization setting. Yes. So you can put the hard plastic toys through the dishwasher in the evening and stuff. It's a really good time to maybe have a look around and minimize the toys that you've got out. Mm. Um, so you can then keep that little bunch of toys clean. Yeah. Um, so you're not having to clean the whole lot. So that's one one tip. Um, and I mean, then it's you've just got to be careful with things like um, on the change table and uh, wiping down the the light switches um, and and things like that that you're touching. Yeah. You're dealing with one baby, then going straight on to change a nappy on a second baby or something like that. Um, yeah. You know, so if you wash your hands in between the nappy changes then you're less likely to, to spread it between them because, I mean, the parents are just as likely to spread it as the, between each child as the, um, well, that, as the child is themselves. That's just the thing then too, isn't it? So, I mean, I guess disinfecting things around the home, like a, a remote control and maybe say the yeah, fridge absolutely. and maybe the, the kettle handle or the things that I guess that we don't even realise and door handles that we, we are constantly touching throughout the day yeah. to stop the spread between the parents as well. Would, would you recommend that as well? Absolutely. Um, you know, it's definitely worthwhile if you can. The other thing is you're just so exhausted. You know, yeah. having multiples is hard work. No doubt. You know, um, and to be quite honest, the last thing you feel like doing when you're ready to just you <laughs> finally get them to sleep. They're so sleeping. now I'm going to start cleaning. <laughs> now I'm going to go and disinfect all the door handles. Yay. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> You can try, you really can. And it's great to have those um, healthy practices in your house. But honestly, you've just got to get through the day sometimes. Um, what about Glen 20? Yes, thought, yeah, I'd love, I mean, I'd personally love to say, yep, go ahead, disinfect your house and stuff like that. <laughs> but it's just sometimes not feasible with, with a couple of little kids when you're so tired, um, you know, and you've got children rolling around on the floor and... You know, yep, great. Try and steam up the floor when you can and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah, just get get out the Glen 20 and just spray everything. That can sort of help maybe on yeah. the nights when you're even more exhausted than normal. Just spray yeah. everything. <laughs> now, we published your article titled Five Ways to Stop Twins and Multiples Sharing Germs. Now, for someone who hasn't read the article yet, can you please give us an overview of what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? Oh, look, um, I think just the the many sleepless nights and things like that that I had with my own (laughs) children um, and the times that I had to just stop and I couldn't do anything else besides comfort two babies that were sick. Um, I was like, right, what can I do that can possibly help people um, not end up in this situation? I mean, invariably, it is inevitable just because with so many germ-based diseases, they're contagious before the symptoms show up. Mm-hmm. So keeping he- everyone healthy isn't easy, but yes. there's a few things we can do to to try and help for it. And um, yeah, so yeah, that was the reason behind writing the article was just to give some people some tips that they hadn't thought about. You know, yeah. like the fact that um, some of those plastic toys, chuck them in the dishwasher at the end of the evening and stuff like that. Yeah. And now, from your perspective, how can um, you know how can you minimise twins and tri- triplets from catching others' germs? Yeah, look, I mean, the biggest thing definitely is not to allow them to share the feeding um, implements and drinking implements and things like that. Um, Mm. You know, I mean, 
I rolled my eyes when the child health nurse told me to not do that. But um, if you can while they're sick, the biggest thing you can do is to provide, because I mean, they're, otherwise they're just ingesting it straight away. If they're sharing a water bottle, yeah. you know, the saliva is still on it and it's going straight into the next child's mouth. Um, What's going to happen? So the biggest thing is to not let them share dummies if you use dummies. Um, yep. Definitely don't use the same bottle if you're bottle feeding um, or water bottle or yeah, even just spoons when you if you feed if you spoon feeding solids um, mm -hmm. and like little things like some people um, and I loved doing this. I usually used to put a share plate out for morning tea um, and ha that had you know bits of cheese and carrots or whatever it was on there for them just to graze at. Um, and I always found they ate really well from a share plate, but that's something that you need to stop doing um, while if, if one of the children is sick. So you make sure everyone gets their own plate cup and everything like plate. that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And what about if they share a cot or a room then? Yeah, look, you do need to try and separate them as much as possible. Um, for us, uh, what we did is we had, um, we would just maybe put the a porta cot up in our bedroom and the healthier one would, would move into there. Um, because we found if you take the sick one out of their normal environment, you know, it maybe makes them feel a little bit worse. Um, but even if, if, so if they're sharing a cot, this would be a really good time to probably separate them into two separate cots or um, bassinets or wherever, it, your, whatever your sleeping plans are. And if they're sharing a room, it's really, again, if you can um, at night time, have them separated. Uh, in, well, first thing is you're probably going to be up to the sick one a bit more often anyway because they're so unhappy, they're having trouble breathing because, you know, they're full of mucus and you might have to be up um, helping them a bit more. Um, so if it doesn't wake the other one up, then that's always a bonus. Yes. Um, so that's that's a big thing. Um, you know, I, yeah. So. I understand that parents of twins are fanatical about your sleep schedules. Um, is this more difficult to manage when they are sick or do you suggest that they should sleep a little bit longer to help their bodies heal and recover? Um, what's your thoughts on this? Sleep is definitely going to be the best thing for them. Um, if they can, if they fall asleep, let them sleep. Um, you know, your routine's not going to get thrown that much out of whack. Those babies need to just to be held and cuddled and, you know, and to sleep. And if that means them sleeping in your arms then for a while, it's not going to ruin your routine. You know, yeah. you can get back onto that once everyone in the house is healthy again. Yeah. And any other tips on um, how to keep everyone else healthy? Um, <laughs> look, desperate times call for desperate measures. I got <laughs> to the point of where I actually put one, um, in the playpen for a while um, and didn't put the other in. Um, so I kind of put the healthy one in the playpen and just left left that baby in there um, so I could make sure that the other one, uh, you know, they weren't using the same toys and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, you've just really, it's hard. And just go easy on yourself. <laughs> yeah, and I've read that colour coding and labelling everything in the house can help uh, the germs um, sort of be a little bit more isolated so you actually know um, what belongs to who. Um, so what are your thoughts on that then? Yep, absolutely. Um, I mean, so many multiple birth families colour coordinate things anyway, particularly if they've got identical twins um, because it just helps people tell them apart. Yes. Um, you know. Johnny's always in red and Gareth is always dressed in green. Um, and so he has a green plate and, and the other, and Johnny has the red plate or the yep. water bottle or anything like that. Um, so definitely. And particularly when they are sick, um, there's all sorts of things you can do if you're bottle feeding to identify each bottle um, that belongs to that child, you know, really make sure you sterilize everything in between feeds, um, put everything through the dishwasher on, on a, on a high setting to kill any germs. Um, you know, I'd, I, I even went and bought some Milton just to, um, have on the table in a big jug ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I could, uh, just drop, drop things into there once the, um, I knew they were clean when I could go and grab them out of there. 
Yeah. This is a question I'd love to know. I mean, and this is um, probably not so much about the, the colds and flus and the germs and the tummy bugs because they are actually something that can be passed on. Um, but, you know, generally feeling under the weather for, for kids is, is, is tough enough. But they say that twins actually feel each other's pain. Um, and I'd love to be able to know, <laughs> have your twins ever experienced anything like this when one twin has come down with an illness of any sort and the other one's actually felt uh, is, is just a mythical thing look mine haven't um but in saying that i've got boy girl fraternal twins um so and i've heard so many lovely stories about when this has happened and um you know we have had in instances where uh when one was in hospital um and the other one would would wake up a lot more frequently throughout the night and it was like oh i wonder if that's because you know they're wondering where their twin is yeah, um, because they're not in the room with them or something like that. Um, but we've never had any incidents of uh, that I'm aware of where they specifically felt each other's pain. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, 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 there's some adorable stories out there. I really do love hearing that kind of thing. Yeah, and I, just, I always just wondered if it was, uh, I mean, I, I would understand that they would be obviously connected on, on a deeper level that we, that no one else can yeah. understand unless you are a twin or a multiple. It's, you know, so undoubtedly there's a connection there that um, that they would be able to sense and feel things that, that we, we don't understand. But yeah, I just wondered if your your, your twins had ever experienced that. Um, but, you know, and last thing, I, I, I know also that having sick kids really is um, quite, as you mentioned before, mentally and physically and also yeah. emotionally draining um, on multiple birth parents. In saying that, what advice do you have for parents of multiples um, during times when the kids are sick? Look, really, this is the time to cut yourself some slack. Um, if you need to sit around all day cuddling babies, do it. Don't worry. I mean, yes, you do still need to keep up with the hygiene and things like that. But there are some things that can just go by the wayside. You do need to make sure that you look after you. You need to, um, you can't get sick as well. There is absolutely nothing worse than having you sick as well as your babies. It's a nightmare. Um, so, you know, drink lots of water yourself. Rest as much as you can. Uh, you need to do whatever you can do to yeah. stop you getting sick. So you still need to eat healthily and everything like that. But honestly, other things can just wait. You need to um, try and give, stop giving your little babies hugs and kisses, even though you need to hold them oh. to keep them up. You know, like don't let their saliva, you know, your saliva and everything. You've just got to be so careful. But really cut yourself some slack. Go easy on yourself. You know, if the babies are young enough, it's not going to be a problem. It's time for you just to sit up on the couch, put some Netflix on and cuddle those babies mm. and let your body stay healthy. And the last question I have, does it get easier the older they get? <laughs> Look, um, I'd like to say yes, um, because that's what kept me going. Um, <laughs> <The hope. laughs> through, those, <laughs> through those hard early years. Definitely the newborn phase is difficult. It's the lack of sleep. You know, it's just, that's the killer. Yeah. It just changes all the time. Um, you know, suddenly you're two years old and you can't go to the park by yourself because you physically can't keep two children safe uh, because they're running in different directions and things like that. So every age group, um, it does get slightly easier in some ways, but then there's obviously some other curveballs that get thrown your way. We're in a really good age at the moment. Um, ours are eight, so they're really helpful around the house. They, you can negotiate with them. You can explain why things um, need to be done and everything like that. But I can tell you one thing, I'm dreading the teenage years already. <laughs> Oh, well, it's just around the corner too. The kids grow so fast. So. I know. <laughs> well, um, look, you've given us some really insightful and helpful information um, and tips during the, um, the chat today, which we're so grateful for. If you were to summarise everything, I guess, for any multiple birth parent listening, how would you summarise your top tips just from the chat today? Look, honestly, um, the biggest one is not to let them share drinking um, and feeding implements. Um, separate them as much as possible. 
increase that hand washing as much as you can. Uh, clean the toys that they're using daily uh, and look after you. Yeah. Wonderful. Look, I will have a link to your article in the introduction paragraph. If any multiple birth parent wants to find you online, whereabouts can they find you? Yeah, so they can head to our, our Facebook page, Twinfo, um, Twinfo Australia. But we're also, um, there's the Parents of Multiples group, which is a huge online community. And everyone that's in there knows how it really is. And uh, if you just need to hop on and have a, oh my gosh, they're both sick, I'm pulling my hair out moment, <laughs> um, there will be someone there who will be readily sympathetic. Um, may have some other tips that you hadn't thought of um, and have some suggestions and basically just give you a virtual hug. That's the beauty of the online community. There's always someone around. Out there that is going through something similar or something that, you know, to share yeah. your stories and help each other out. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time today and I can't wait to have a chat with you again soon. Take care and give my love to the kids. Thank you. Bye. All right, bye.